Hey guys, it's Allie. Welcome back to Infertile AF, the podcast. This is episode 243 called Susie, part two. And now a word from our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by First Response. First Response is fervently committed to supporting, sharing, and empowering all pregnancy journeys. They're passionate about providing accurate information, especially to those struggling with infertility, the loss of a baby, and maternal health inequities. First Response knows that when testing for pregnancy, you want to be sure of your results. That's why they created Comfort Check, a pregnancy test kit that helps you test confidently and conveniently. The First Response Comfort Check Pregnancy Test Kit is a value pack containing eight total tests, three First Response Early Result Tests, and five First Response Pregnancy Test Strips, allowing women to test early and often for added reassurance. First Response's early result test included in the Comfort Check Kit is their number one best-selling pregnancy test. It detects all major forms of the pregnancy hormone commonly found in urine and is over 99% accurate from the day of your expected period with results ready to be read in just three minutes. The First Response Comfort Check Pregnancy Test Kit is available for purchase in store and online. Be sure to pick one up today. Thanks, First Response. All right, guys. So before we get started, I want to let everybody know that Fertility Rally Live is happening on October 21st. It's a virtual event. You don't have to come the day of the event to watch everything. If you get a free ticket, which you can get right now at the link in my bio, you have 90 days to watch all of the content. So if you do come on 1021, you will see speakers like Tara Lipinski and Deja, Deja Riley is a door check. You will see a Doctors for Fertility panel, which is amazing. And you'll also get to watch eight different breakout sessions on really specific topics. So there's also giveaways. We have a happy hour at the end of the day. It is our seventh Fertility Rally Live Everybody is welcome. Tickets are completely free. Check out the link in my bio at Infertile AF Stories on Instagram or check out the link in the bio at Fertility Rally on Instagram. Register for your tickets. You can't see it if you don't register. So please come join us and we will rally like mofos. Okay. So Susie Welsh Divine is an OG friend of mine in this community. I first had her on the podcast in January, 2021. And today she's going to tell us everything that's happened, not only personally in her family building journey, but also with her company Binto, which she founded and is the CEO of. So if you guys might remember, Susie is a fertility and IVF nurse, and she happened to find herself going through her own infertility journey, which surprised even her. So we're going to hear what's happened since then. Without further ado, this is Susie's infertility story. Okay. Hi, Susie. It's so good to talk to you always. You oh, are just such an amazing so person. Be back. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for doing this. First of all, thank you for having me back. Of course. This happened in the all, pretty much, I think, two years since we last recorded. But I yeah. am an IVF and fertility nurse by training. So this is really my world and I've been living in it for a long time. And I had no idea that I would go through infertility. So last time we spoke, I had just miscarried for the second time after a transfer with a PGT tested embryo. And it was a long, I think like six months between that and when we transferred again. So we did a lot of additional testing. It turns out I had a clotting disorder, a two. So I was put on Lovenox. So like any pregnancy, I have to be on Lovenox. Mm -hmm. Um, and I remember this because my mother has a clotting disorder. I was like, you know what? Should we look into this? So we did some additional testing. Was that something that you brought up to your yes. doctor and clinic? Okay. And she this was so like, hey, how did we not think about this? So we added this testing on. And then it was right at the start of the Emma and Alice test. Like they just came out. And my doctor said, you know, why don't we try this? we can do these two tests and see if it would pick anything up. So 
The two tests, one looks for endometritis, which is a um, infection in the endometrium, and it can be treated with antibiotics. And then the other test looks at the microbiome of the uterus. And so picking up if you need certain bacteria added in. Mm -hmm. Uh, We also did an ERI cycle, which, you know, there's so much evidence today saying it might not be necessary to do ERI cycles, um, and it may not lead to better success Mm -hmm. or pregnancy outcomes. But, you know, two years ago, we were still really looking into this and using Mm -hmm. it. So can you explain as a nurse, you know, you probably know this better than anybody or that way better than I could explain this. What is, what is that exactly? And what does it do? And why is it sometimes not pushed for? Like you said, like sometimes they're like, eh, you know, sometimes it could make a difference. Sometimes it couldn't, but we've talked about this a lot on the show, but I'd love to hear it from your point of view. So the ERA is endometrial receptivity, like assay or analysis. I might get that wrong. And it's when we are looking to see when you might be re- like you're receptive to um, implanting an embryo for progesterone exposure. Mm-hmm. Um, we've now found that it's actually really hard to kind of pinpoint this. I mean, there's so many other factors kind of at play here is, are you doing this right after a miscarriage? Are you doing it with, you know, there are, things that could impact it. Um, And if we look at the evidence and data that we have from, these are not clinical trials, but what we can do is do like reviews. So Mm -hmm. I think the first study came out was with the same clinic that they did this next time, which came out, I think like a year ago now, maybe a year and a half ago, Mm -hmm. saying that the ERA isn't predictive of, successful pregnancy outcomes necessarily. So we should stick with the usual five days um, of progesterone exposure and transfer and keep going. Obviously okay. it is, up. I really fully believe there's so much we still don't know about infertility and that there's a lot of work to be done in this field and advancing and pushing things forward. So I think the ERA is a fascinating tool and test. And so how, you know, could we use this, but in a more controlled way, does it work for some people? And that's where you really want to work with a provider who is going to guide you um, with the best plan for you. Mm-hmm. So that's really how I think about it. Um, mm-hmm. It's still an option for many people if you want to try it and you can kind of take it from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've had a lot of people in Fertility Rally who their doctors kind of recommended against it or said, we don't think it'll make a difference, but have done it anyway, just because sometimes, as you know, going through this, it feels good to like check the box and be like, I tried it all. I did that. You know what I mean? Exactly. So we did all three, the ERA, the Emma and Alice. Mm -hmm. My ERA came back that I needed an extra 24 hours of progesterone exposure. So we did an extra shot. And then I forget which one. I think it was the Emma test that does the bacteria. So we needed to take vaginal probiotics. Mm-hmm. And here okay. we make probiotics at Binto. So it was kind of a weird <laughs> moment for me. Um, You're like, perfect. I have those in the closet right here. <laughs> I know. And we're actually, um, yeah, this is a product that is very close to my heart that we're really looking into in terms of like vaginal application. So mm-hmm. very cool. So I did that. I did not have endometritis. So we did the ERA protocol, giving me an extra day of progesterone, did the vaginal probiotics, transferred again in June. I had miscarried in December Mm -hmm. and this one got pregnant again and it resulted in a healthy baby. So we have an 18 month old son who we love and would not have without assisted reproductive technology. So yes, you know, this field is so critical. Tell me about finding out that you were pregnant with him. Like what it was, was after? Yeah, <laughs> it was very scary, you know, cause we had gotten pregnant before. So, you know, the first, the first trimester is just so rocky. 
and you're just so scared the whole time mm-hmm. um, and overwhelmed. And I think those feelings can be natural, whether you get pregnant, you know, on your own after months and months of trying and loss or with IUI or IVF, it doesn't really matter. It can still feel anxiety provoking and like, it's like the bottom might fall out. Yeah. I think it's important to note that the anxiety of pregnancy after infertility and or loss is it's hard to explain if you haven't been there, you know, but you know, right. and p- so many people listening know the intensity of that where some people are just like, oh, you're, you're pregnant. It's fine. But it's not like that. It's every, you know, you're so ex- used to expecting bad news so often that. I know, you know it's so true. My husband, he was definitely the optimist for us mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. during this time. And he'd be like, I was definitely the negative one, like always expecting bad news. And like nothing ever good happens to I was such a negative Nelly, negative Nancy, whatever they say. But that's just yeah. how I was. And that's what worked for me. And I, whether you're super positive or super negative, I don't really think it changes the outcome. Right. So if, you know, you can cope however you need to. I really believe that it's okay to be sad and feel like it's not going to work out. I'm so glad you said that, Susie, because I agree. And I think that, you know, there's definitely something to be said for a positive outlook, of course, but yes. re- realistically, and people in this world know, like, we're human. Sometimes you just feel shitty, or you just feel pessimistic, or you just feel like, why would it work? It hasn't worked th- this far, you know, things like that. So I just want to normalize that, that if people are feeling like that, it's okay. And like you said, it's not technically, I mean, there's no way to tell, right? But it's going to affect, if you have a negative thought, it's not going to like change what's happening inside your body necessarily. I mean, it's, this is a whole nother podcast we could have, like, I get it, but, but I know what you're saying, you know, it's okay to feel that way. And I wish more people had said that to me. So if you're Mm. listening to this, this is your signal or sign to be like, it's okay for me to be negative about this sometimes. And scared, like tremendously scared scared and stressed and all that. Yeah. Yeah, That comes with all of this. Um, One of the other things you said that I wanted to circle back on was that this field, you know, there's still so much to learn and so many things are changing. Even, you know, yearly, you and I first talked, you know, over a year ago, what, what has changed since then from your, from the medical side? Like, Tell me about some of the things like I know Binto is constantly growing and evolving and adding supplements and products. Like, tell me what you've seen that's changed even in the last couple of years. Yeah, I think from the like over the counter product space, there's so much, there's so much we still want to do with Binto and that we're working on behind the scenes. But I found out that I have endometriosis through my infertility journey. And that's where, you know, spending a lot of time and and R&D. So for us, it was really about inflammation. So I think a lot of disease processes, as we know, in the United States and now around the world are caused by inflammatory, like chronic inflammatory response. So we have a turmeric or curcumin supplement that really focuses on the inflammatory response and cutting that back for people with inflammation, specifically endometriosis. And then, yeah, the vaginal probiotics, that is another huge area of research for us and looking at the uterine microbiome. I think we're learning a lot more about the uterus. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. So yes, we need to support egg health and sperm health but the uterine environment is critical, right? Like that's what houses the embryo and it needs to implant and grow in that environment that, you know, we need to have perfect kind of homeostasis in there Mm -hmm. to be successful. Um, And so I think that's where, you know, the supplement space, we're going to see some more advances. And I think in the greater reproductive technology world with, um, looking at PRP. So that those plasma injections, um, into the ovaries, looking at ozone therapy for the uterus. Um, so more of these kind of, I want to, don't really want to say the word alternative, um, Mm -hmm. because more mainstream clinics are using them, Mm -hmm. but not just traditional IVF in terms of like all the shots and medications and really at IVF in a much more like personalized approach. And that's really what we focus on in Bito is that's everybody yeah. is different. So personalized medicine, I think is here to stay. 
This episode is sponsored by Mosey Baby. If you are listening right now, you know that wanting a baby can be simple, but trying to conceive can be the most stressful thing in the world. But thanks to Mosey Baby, it doesn't have to be. Mosey Baby founders Maureen and Mark struggled to conceive for two and a half years. When they couldn't find an easy and comfortable way to inseminate at home, they decided to make the product themselves, and that's how Mosey Baby was born. Created with insight from a fertility specialist, Mosey is the first patented syringe designed for home insemination and has been helping families inseminate privately at home since 2015. Before you spend thousands of dollars in a doctor's office, consider Mosey Baby and make a baby with love through insemination. Curious? Learn more about the Mosey Baby Kit and read some of the amazing stories from the Mosey community at try.moseybaby.com slash infertileaf. Again, that's try, T-R-Y dot moseybaby, M-O-S-I-E-B-A-B-Y dot com slash infertileaf. Use code infertileaf for 15% off your order at checkout and join the 100,000 plus families who have included Mosey on their journeys to conceive. Thanks, Mosey Baby. Right. I love that you say, you know, one of Binto's main tenets is like, there's no one size fits all. Exactly. You guys are very, very personalized. And I've, that's why, I mean, I, we've been working with you. I've been working I with know. you for, from the jump. Like you were one of the first partners that I had when I started this podcast. So thank you for that. And, you know, I'm yes. very inspired by the way that you guys too have grown and, and added things. We do have mates, which is our male fertility line, um, because as we know, half of at least half of all infertility cases come from the male. And I think we're going to see more cases of male infertility just in the Western hemisphere. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like our environment is changing and Mm -hmm. um, that is going to impact sperm health and not Mm -hmm. just egg health. Mm -hmm. Yes, Binto, we you know, when we launched seven years ago, we're celebrating our seventh birthday at the end of this month, which is crazy. Amazing. Happy birthday. Thank you. No one was talking about infertility. No one was talking about over-the-counter products you can use in conjunction with traditional Western medicine and ART. And Mm -hmm. um, yes, it's exciting to be on the forefront of it. And yeah, females, you know, customize their fertility supplements and make it feel a little less daunting than dealing with a thousand bottles and just getting you exactly what you need. And it's really personalized. So like very dose specific, if you need, you know, three capsules of DHEA, we can get you that. If you need two of NAC, whatever it is, we can help you customize. You got the hookup. A couple of, I remembered what I was going to say. A couple of things you mentioned PRP we've talked about. Can you give us just the really brief description again of what that is just for people that might be listening for the first time and haven't heard us talk about this on the show before? Sure. So this came about a few years ago. It was after um, my time in working in the bedside in a fertility, well, not bedside, but in a fertility clinic. And it's when we take that uh, platelet-rich plasma, PRP, and we are using your own plasma. So we kind of we remove that from you. And then we take the plasma and we inject it into the ovaries. And so we're using this to help kind of like rejuvenate the ovaries and improve egg health and get more oocytes. So like getting your ovaries to kick in. So this is great for people who are older, who might have more diminished ovarian reserve, like on the cusp of menopause, et cetera. Okay. And then ozone therapy too. Is that what? Yes. What is that? This is very unique. And I was going to go to New York and do all of this. Um, It's taking this like ozone air and putting it in through the vaginal canal and it helps with the inflammation. So it's really good for people with endometriosis and it's more for the uterus than the ovaries. So helping like getting this I'm not quite sure. It's been a minute since I was in this, like researching this world. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is an interesting therapy in terms of like one more thing that we could try if we're, we've gone through multiple rounds of IVF and mm-hmm. we're looking for new therapies. It would be PRP and ozone. Okay. 
That's so interesting. I haven't heard much about ozone. So thank you for that. There are not many places that do it. Mm -hmm. Um, Rejuvenating Fertility Center in New York has it. And I think a few others maybe in New York and LA, but other than that, I'm, I'm not sure where you could find it. Okay. The other thing that you guys are offering, which I think is really, really great, are fertility consults, yes. um, telehealth. Can you tell us about that and why it's so important and you guys have added that to your roster of you know, support systems? Of course. So when we first started, I really didn't want to be the face of a company. That's not why I started Vinto. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then what we quickly discovered is that people loved that I was an IVF and fertility nurse and it just gives you access to someone who understands this world. So that's sort of how telehealth came about a few years ago. And Mm -hmm. we offer a range of telehealth services, but our fertility consults specifically are an amazing opportunity for you to get one-on-one support with a licensed fertility provider. Um, So we have RNs and physician associates that you can book with. And you can get your questions answered. We can talk to you about anything from building your supplement routine for your, you know, fertility needs to um, your treatment protocols, to your hormone levels, whatever it is that you want to walk through. We're here to hold your hand and help you navigate this rather than turning towards Google or having to sit in the wait room, waiting room, or get an appointment, which takes, you know, like six months to a year. So it's just a nice alternative to talk to someone who has a licensed background in fertility. And these are 30 minute consults and they cost, I believe, $50. So it's Mm -hmm. about equivalent to a copay. And then we'll follow up with you. So we'll follow up with you via email. Um, and make sure we take notes and get those notes over to you if you have like specific needs um, with formulating your supplements or their things in your care plan that you wanted us to help with. Mm-hmm. That's so smart. And I think, like you said, you know, trying to Google stuff can be so overwhelming. You know, being somebody oh, yeah. that went through this, you know, it was 10 years ago and plus now for me that I was in the midst of this and none of this existed. And I was so overwhelmed. And like, I'm getting like, I still get like PTSD vibes when I think back to like, I'm like welling up too, because it was so hard and it's so daunting. And, you know, that's why you guys started this. That's why we started Fertility Rally in this podcast. You know, I just, to make this navigate, to make navigating this world easier for the people that are coming behind us. So I think the consults are brilliant because, you can have a trusted medical professional or whoever, you know, you end up talking to. Is it all medical professionals? It is. Okay. So you have a trusted medical professional who's answering questions rather than like you said, you know, you trying to wade through all the information that's out there and what's correct and what's not. And, you know, I just think it's, it's so good to have somebody holding your hand. Yeah. And that's what we're here for. And it's not, I think everyone who does it loves it. They're like, this is so nice. And you may have well-intentioned friends, but sometimes you don't need advice from friends who haven't been through this, or you just want to talk to someone. You can use the 30 minutes or hour, however long you need, you want. And I mean, I even would Google stuff and I'm, but that's just because you get like, it's impossible to not get in your own head. I think when you're navigating Mm -hmm. utility. Agreed going back to your story and your yes. family building journey. So you had your son. Yes. And then what happened? Cause your journey, your story is <laughs> not over yet. It isn't over. We, when right before he turned one, we went back to our fertility clinic to start getting everything ready for wanting to do a transfer in the spring, this past spring. And I did an ERA, I did another ERA cycle and what else? I may have done the Emma and Alice again too. Mm -hmm. We did the mock transfer. We did the sonohistogram, all the workup, everything. Mm -hmm. And after it was over, we were planning out a transfer and I was like, I can't do this. It's exactly what you said, Allie, like the PTSD came back to me and I was like, this is so overwhelming. I to my husband, I said, look, I know you want to close together, but like, 
I can't handle another loss right now. Mm -hmm. Um, I really just want to be clear headed for the business and my team. And like, I feel like I'm in a good spot mentally and I just can't take this on right now. So we said, okay, we'll push back and we'll do, we'll do the transfer in August so I can enjoy the summer. We had some trips planned. We'll relax. And then a few weeks after I finished the, maybe a month or so after finishing the ERA cycle, I forget the exact timeline. I was having all this bloating and pain. I wasn't getting a period and I had been like, I had been breastfeeding. So I wasn't, you know, I had stopped before the ERA. So I wasn't quite sure what was going on. And given my history of endometriosis, I called my fertility clinic and they said, just come in, let's get blood work and a scan and like look at your ovaries. Let's see what's Mm -hmm. going on. So get the blood work. What were you thinking? Like what's going on? I just thought it was my endometriosis. Okay. Um, So then they put me in an exam room and they do the transvaginal ultrasound and they're very quiet. And they're like, did you take a pregnancy test? I'm like, no. They're like, well, there's a heartbeat. And I just started crying. I was so over, like, I just can't, I mean, this, you hear about this on podcasts or things. So I'm one of those people now and I don't want people to hate me, but yeah, apparently crazy things happen. And it was very rocky in the beginning. We went back again and it hadn't grown, but it was two different people doing the scans. And when you're that early, every single millimeter is so vital on a, an early um, pregnancy scan. So then I, we thought it was going to be another miscarriage. I'm like, this is exactly what I didn't want to have happen. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I was like, I just can't handle this again. And then our third scan, there was growth, the heartbeat, everything. So it was very like, we thought we were miscarrying. We like had a DNC spot open we did another scan before and then yes, no, I'm 20 weeks pregnant. <laughs> oh my God. Pregnant. And we're just, we can't believe it. I'm still kind of in shock. Um, right. But yeah, it's, that's why I think studying the uterus is so, I mean, I really think like pregnancy can change your uterine microbiome. And I am, I'm just so fascinated about this. Field. Yeah, it's almost like we've barely even scratched the surface oh, yeah, on totally all this stuff, right? I mean, there's so yeah. much cut to 50 years from now when people are like, oh my God, back in the day, they didn't even <laughs> know, you know, like it's going to be so interesting to I see. Hope so. you know? Yeah, I really do. Because we've yeah. been doing the same thing kind of for a while now <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. about it in terms of IVF. And I think companies like Vinto and other startups in the femtech space are critical for moving, moving forward. Absolutely. Yeah. So what else are you never know? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, like you said before, like the body is so wild, right? Like it's so crazy. What did your husband say when, when you were pregnant with your Um, one? Yeah. I didn't even tell him I was going into Dr. Kelly. So it's like, I, it was about me and like being in pain. And so, yeah, I got to have that experience of like, surprising him, which we had, you know, infertility robs you of so much. There's just so much pain. There's no surprise. There's no that like fun, you know, it just kind of rips that out of it. So yeah, it was, he was so excited because he wanted to get, he wanted to back to back. And I was like, oh, Oh here you go. (laughs) Gosh, it's so cool. I love it so much. So speaking of just innovations and things. Tell me some more things that you guys are excited about. And like, say five years from now, what would you love to be offering at Binto? Oh my gosh. I would love to do more in the world of like testing. So not just like the product side, but doing a lot more like in the testing world, whether that's like biopsies or blood, I think that would be really really cool. And it's something that we're always exploring. And then I definitely want to go deeper with telehealth. You know, only 50% of the counties in the U.S. have a single OBGYN, let alone a fertility provider. So if we can somehow bridge that gap to communities that are in need, um, specifically like the middle of America and the South, um, that, that would be amazing to me. So those are a few things. I don't want to give everything away. 
Okay. Thanks everybody for listening. And thanks again to Susie. She is such a great, brilliant person and so open about everything. So definitely check out Binto. And also don't forget to check out Fertility Rally Live. Tickets are completely free. The link to the tickets is in my bio at Inforlife Stories on Instagram or the bio at Fertility Rally on Instagram. So everybody's welcome. Even if you're not specifically going through this right this very minute, you can come and watch all these amazing talks. We have Tara Lipinski. We have Deja Riley. We have a Doctors for Fertility panel. We have eight breakout sessions, giveaways, happy hour at the end of the day, all this good stuff. So it's something I wish I had when I was going through it. And I'm happy to support you guys and empower you and educate you. And I hope to see you there. It's on October 21st. Even if you can't come that day, still register for your ticket because you also get a virtual swag bag and you have 90 days to watch everything. So really hope you'll be there. This is for you guys and it's such a labor of love and we enjoy putting it on. So see you there.